In this video, you'll learn the top 10 foods to try in Madrid from foodie to foodie, coming right up. Hi everybody, I'm Antoinette and welcome back to my channel. Frog and Courage is a travel food and lifestyle channel and if you're interested in trying some delicious irresistible foods in Madrid, click that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and let's get straight into the food. The first thing you have to try in Madrid is churros y chocolate, also known as churros and chocolate. Churros are a lightly fried donut that are crisp on the outside and warm and chewy on the inside. And the chocolate is not your standard like pocket of chocolate, y'all. Like it's not the watered down stuff. It is actual real chocolate that has been melted down and served to you hot and ready to go. It is incredibly rich, incredibly thick, and incredibly delicious. Churros will run you about four euros for a plate of three large churros. The best place for churros in Madrid is Chocolateria San Ginés, which is one of the oldest chocolaterias and churro shops in Madrid. And you may wanna grab a bottle of water in your order so you can wash it all down because that chocolate is thick and rich, y'all. The second food you need to eat in Madrid is paella. Of course, paella. Paella is a rice-based dish that originated in Valencia, Spain. You can have a seafood paella. You can have a meat paella. You can have a mixed paella. You can have a vegetarian paella. This is the paella that I made as part of my market tour and cooking class, which I'll link down below. It is paella with ribs and presa ibérica ham. It was so good and I had so much fun in this class making all of these dishes. So definitely check that market tour and link out down below. The third thing you need to eat in Madrid is manchego cheese. Manchego cheese originates from La Mancha region of Spain and is made from the manchego sheep's milk. There are different types of manchego cheese, manchego fresco, manchego semi-curado, curado, as well as viejo. Manchego cheese is firm and compact with these little tiny bubbles in it. It's got a distinct aroma and a very sharp taste with a very prominent aftertaste. The fourth food you must try in Madrid is seafood. Do you know Madrid is one of the top four seafood markets in the world and the second largest fish market in the world, second only to Japan? Uh, yeah, seriously. So while you're in Seafood City, you have to try the different types of seafood available. You have to check out the bluefin tuna, baby clams, grilled shrimp, cod, calamari, as in the bocadillo de calamari sandwich, which is just a bunch of calamari fried into this beautiful bun and you just rip into it. The fifth thing you must try in Madrid are olives. Now you might be thinking, why would I try some basic olives in Madrid? Spain is the largest producer of olives in the entire world, producing 40 to 45% of the world's olives. Seriously, eat some olives, everybody. Olives are a great souvenir to bring back with you. This is what I brought back with me from Spain, some extra virgin olive oil in this beautiful glass container with a cork top. You can see I've used my olive oil up quite a bit, but it came in this gorgeous black box. So if you're looking for souvenirs, definitely pick up some olive oil. And as a pro tip, go to a grocery store because there are a lot. And as you're continually touring Spain, if you want to get more information on Madrid and the region, check out some of the books and the resources I listed below that you can buy in advance before your trip. The sixth thing you must, you absolutely must, if nothing else, you must eat this food. It is jamón. And what is jamón? Jamón is a Spanish word for ham. And it's not just like your typical hams that you get, you know, you have for Easter or Christmas or, you know, or just ham that you have whenever. This ham is a special ham. It is salt cured and aged for years. There is a very strict process. Jamón comes from a certain region in Spain and the pigs have to be treated and fed according to those standards, or it's not jamón. Jamón is usually served sliced paper thin, and you can just pick it up with your hand. It doesn't need to be refrigerated. It doesn't require cooking, and there are also three different colored labels, black, green, and white, that tell you what kind of process the jamón went through. There are two different types of jamón, jamón serrano and jamón ibérico. Jamón serrano has been cured for one to one and a half years and the pigs are fed cereal grain. Jamón ibérico is a higher quality ham that has been cured for two to four years and are traditionally fed acorns. They're free range pigs and a whole jamón ibérico 
can run you around $2,000. So this is probably the most expensive ham you will eat, but it is so worth it. And you don't have to buy the entire ham because it is, remember, sliced paper thin. So grab a sandwich, grab it and some of your side items and you can still get all the flavor without paying the high price tag. If you're looking for a place for jamón, check out Mercado San Antonio or San Antonio Market. There is a large selection of jamón there in each of the different labels that I talked about before. So try a slice, grab a couple slices, and take some bread and some manchego cheese and head out to Buen Retiro Park for a beautiful picnic. The seventh thing you should try in Madrid is horchata. Specifically, horchata de chufa. Horchata is a beverage that is sweet, white, and has a consistency of milk. It's made of tiger nuts, sugar, and water, and is the perfect cool treat on your hot days in Madrid, since Madrid is one of the sunniest places in Europe. The eighth thing you must try in Madrid is sangria. Sangria is a beverage made of red wine, liqueur, and fresh fruit. I found sangria to be totally different in Madrid than I did in the United States. In the United States, it tend to be um, almost kind of like a sweet juice, so to speak, but in Madrid, it is fresh and it is light and it can, it can kind of get you. You gotta be careful with sangria in Madrid. It's one of those kind of silent uh, beverages that might take you down, so drink responsibly. Another drink to try is the Tinto de Verano, which is a mix of red wine and like a lemon soda. That's a popular drink in Madrid. Or if you're looking to have a fancy night out, have some cava, which is like champagne. My ninth food you must try in Madrid are tapas. Now I know tapas, there's a lot of different types of tapas, but all of them are delicious. The beauty of tapas is that they're small treats that you can enjoy with friends or you can have a variety all by yourself. And you can even combine some of the food I mentioned earlier. So for instance, for tapas you can get croquetas and you can get jamón croquetas, which are like little potato balls with cheese with things stuffed in them. Deliciousness stuff in them. You can try the gambas al ajillo, which is the garlic shrimp, or the tortilla española, which is like a Spanish omelet. And tostas, which are like little toasted pieces of bread, almost kind of like a crostini, with all kinds of different toppings on them. A few tips when you're ordering tapas in Spain is know what kind of tapas you get. Some people are surprised when they think they've ordered a small little plate of tapas, but they really get a huge portion. That's because you have to order them specifically. There are things called raciones, which is essentially tapas the size of an entire dinner plate. If you're looking for a large portion, get a raciones of tapas. There's also a medias raciones. Basically, it's half the size of the raciones. And there's also just a traditional tapas, which is a small saucer size plate of food. And note that the cost varies. So if you're looking at a tapas menu and you notice that a tapas might be like $25, then double check the menu to see if you're not looking at a raciones versus the tapas size food. Tapas are super cheap. They can range from a euro to maybe three to four euros per tray on up, depending on how fancy you want to get with them. In Madrid, I found two delicious places for tapas. The first I already mentioned is Mercado San Miguel. It is a hub of nightlife. It is, that place is so lively and there are multiple tapas bars at Mercado San Miguel. So while I was there, I picked up a sangria, I picked up some tostones, I checked, I picked out an omelet. Like I had a ball at Mercado San Miguel and you have to go there. It's a place for men, women, and children, young and old. I met a German couple, had a lovely conversation with them. You may have to kind of elbow around to get some space, but don't expect to sit down and have like a formal dinner with wait service. Oh no, it is a quick happening market. So know what you want to order, pick up your food. You might stand and eat it and then throw your paper away. Go to another bar, grab some more tapas, eat those, grab something to drink, and then you're done. The beauty of Madrid at night is when you're walking through the streets, you can run into a bunch of really cool places. And I ran into Taberno del Chato. The tapas there were so delicious. I mean, you were talking about flavor on point. You definitely have to check out the Taberno while you're there. And this is what I got. I got essentially two different flights of tapas, each served in a unique way, and each had a really, really bold flavor. Last but certainly not least, my 10th 
must try food in Madrid is the suckling pig. Commonly called cochinillo, it's a roasted pig with a crispy outer skin, usually served with roasted potatoes. Oh, it's so good. The skin, if you are a skin lover, I'm a skin lover. Oh, that crisp is almost, the crisp on that skin is almost kind of like eating a, a chip. It just falls and crunches so lovely. Segovia, Spain is considered the best place to have the suckling pig, but you can definitely check it out in Madrid at the oldest operating restaurant in the world, Guinness Book of World Records named Restaurante Sobrino de Boten as the oldest operating restaurant in the world from way back in 1725. That's where I went. It was so good. I even wrote a blog post about it, y'all. You can check that out in the link down below. And as a tip, if you order a whole suckling pig, the head of the pig is still on it. So if you have someone that's a little bit squeamish, then you may want to stick to ordering maybe like a quarter size portion of the pig. While you're out dining in Madrid, keep these tips in mind. Madrid is a city that does not sleep. So restaurants tend to open a little later. Lunch is usually from two to 4 p.m. and dinner doesn't really start until 9 p.m. all the way out to 11 and in some places midnight. So if you're expecting a traditional lunch at 12, followed by a dinner at 6.30, you're not gonna get that in Madrid. So prepare with different snacks during the day because you're going to eat and stay out late. As I mentioned before, Madrid's currency is in euros, so make sure you have plenty of euros on hand. And tipping isn't really common in Madrid for restaurants. At the most, you may tip about a euro or round up your change, maybe two euros, or if you're at a really, really fancy exceptional restaurant, maybe 5% of the bill, maybe. But again, tipping is typically done in cash, so don't expect to pay the tip with your card and also check your bill because sometimes there's a service charge already added onto it. So you may not wanna tip on top of a tip. But all in all, foodies, please go to Madrid. The food, the drinks are amazing, okay? It's just simply amazing. It's like a flavor ball bursts in your mouth with every bite of the food. You will not regret going to Madrid and eating. If nothing else, just eat in Madrid. It is so worth it and it is so affordable. Before you go, if you need to learn how to get around Madrid on a budget or maybe with some more information about the Prado Museum, check out my Madrid playlist linked at the end of this video and in the description down below. As I like to say, now that you know the top foods you must must try in Madrid. Frolic, have courage, and just go. Share this video with a friend and give it a thumbs up if you like it, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.